that note, welcome to the Doom 3 commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Well, how's this for a change of scenery? Instead of the drab industrial setting, we have now traded it in for hell. Yes, you can see it all. Fire, brimstone, an ancient portal of light. Yeah, we finally made it. A different setting, which I'm sure will probably be of some rather intrigue to a lot of people, I guess. Yeah, to a lot of people, this is probably considered to be the best point in the game since, you know, now we're in the thick of it. And if I may say anything about uh, this setting, I really do love the design of Hell in Doom 3 specifically, because it's not just all fire and brimstone, as we'll soon see, because uh, what we see here is some rather beautiful artwork. I mean, seriously, take a look at that in the background. Well, yeah, for what little you could see it for. Like, I mean, that isn't just fire and brimstone, that looks like a mixture of space and some kind of warped dimension. And to me, that looks fucking beautiful. I mean, not only that, but just look at... Again, like, I mean, maybe it's just me, uh, just being amazed by video game art design, but... Again, the amount of detail that its software put into hell in this game... God, it just looks so mesmerizing. Oh dear. Now I'll comment on the horror in a little bit after this little cutscene, but uh, yeah, enjoy this. Hello there, Hell Knight. Yes, now we actually have to face it without the aid of the BFG 9000. Now anyway, as far as the horror is concerned, while it doesn't exactly have any uh, profound psychological moments as, you know, we've seen earlier in the game, it is a very creepy place to be walking around, doubly so considering the fact that there's those fucking cherubs. But again, they're more annoying than anything else, but... Again, hell in Doom 3 will put you on edge, if only because of those droning vocals alone. And if you actually take the time to listen to the soundtrack itself, there is actually a very... a very ambient kind of... sense of death to it. Again, I'm not really sure how to adequately describe it, but there's just something incredibly macabre about walking through this place. Uh, but that being said, however, I think there is a lot to like about the hell in this version. I think... Hmm. Can't really put it into words, but I think it's just a mixture of ambient lighting and just a nice use of detail, really. Now, as I mentioned last time, considering the fact that a majority of the game does take place in the UAC base on Mars, I think a lot of people do tend to argue that Doom 3 has too little environment loc- uh, What's the word to say? Uh, excuse me, my Pepsi. I guess what the word I'm trying to look for is that it doesn't have too much environment variety. Uh, but in the case of Doom 3, considering how the UAC base was continuing, yeah, continuing to be progressively taken over, I think eventually seeing Hell in this one was worth the wait. Because, I mean, fucking look at this place. I mean, all throughout the game you're given build up about how, you know, Betruga wants to infect the, the Earth with demons and everything. And, uh, this is your little taste of, you know, what's in store for the Earth. So, and again, while we don't exactly have the stakes of the people on Earth uh, being afraid of the demons since they don't really know what's going on, I do think it does add a sense of urgency to the plot, even more so than, you know, what we already saw in the UAC base, with everything getting progressively more destroyed and corrupted by the influence of Hell. So if there's anything that, if there is anything I can say on Hell on that note, it'd be the urgency of the situation. Uh, now, although I honestly would have thought this would have been, would have been a far go uh, better idea than, well, what we got here, uh, the enemies are not made to be more powerful or anything of the sort, which, uh, considering that we're in Hell, I would have thought would have been the case since, you know, Hell is their home and that is the, I suppose that probably would have been the strongest source of their power, if I'm just going purely by my speculation. But, ag but again, video games, so I'm not really gonna piss my Cheerios about it. And uh, one thing I will say though is that we will be coming across a lot of familiar enemies that we've faced across our journey. Naturally, of course, you've seen the Cherubs, you've seen the Hell Knights, you've seen the Mancubus. Go, oh, my Mancubus! And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much up to you to use all the tricks you've learned throughout the game to your advantage as 
that they're pretty much regular enemies here. Some more frequent than others, but I think you get the general impression. Well, that's cheery. And of course you will also get the occasional interruption by Dr. Petruga. Again, they're pretty much just stock clips by the uh, late voice actor who voiced them, so... You know, I feel okayish in talking over them. And once again we get to see the return of the good old Berserk Pack. I'm not really sure what it's called in this game though. Probably like, you know, the Milky or the Helmet of Death or something or other. But anyway, it uses stock screams and therefore by the power of stock editing, we can punch people with a single punch and they die instantly. It really does bring familiarity to the term one punch can kill. Hell Knight. Why are you it? Unfortunately though it doesn't last forever and we have to fight another Hell Knight without it, as you will soon see momentarily. Yes, saving more looting. Now I didn't really get to talk about it last time, although we do have a PDA coming up in a second, but um, as for the Hell Knights, they are very powerful, and again I didn't have much, again I should stop wasting time by padding out commentary, but yeah, they can shoot fireballs like the imps, or plasma balls, I guess. Although they do a little bit more damage, and if you know how to use the use the shotgun appropriately, you can take them out no problem. Uh, but both by their physical attacks, they can hit hard, and well, I suppose in general their attacks are just a little bit more heavier. Oh, what is this? Seem to have found a supply cache. Anyway, I'll let you listen to this PDA, and I'll take a swig of the Pepsi. See you in a bit. This is the audio of a research specialist Simon Garlick, dated August 8, 2145. It seems that I have misplaced the rest of the science team. I don't know how it happened. This place... Well, I don't know what this place has done with me. One moment there, I'm taking samples, and the next thing I know, I, I turn around and the is gone. There, one second, turn around, Gone. I can't raise anyone on the comlex. The only signs of the team I can find are tools and other personal effects that seem to be left behind. Almost as if they had stopped working midway through my new experiments. This place does funny things with your eyes and your perception of time. Hopefully, I just went into the next sector and I'm waiting for me to catch up. I'm going off to find them now. This is the audio log of research specialist Simon Garlick, dated August 10th, 2145. It's been two days now since I've seen any other team members. I don't know how I've survived this long, or how I got away. They were just, uh, torn apart. They could only be described as demons. I have never seen such a big thing move so quickly. Oh dear God, what has happened to us? The teeth. That's the last thing I've ever seen. Teeth. The sounds. Words cannot describe. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they find me again. I'm convinced they are toying with me, allowing me to stay two steps ahead of them. I can see them in the shadow sometime. Um, why did they taunt me? I'm not sure how much longer I, 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 I can... I'm shooting at shadows here. And every moment I feel them creeping closer toward me. Oh God. Oh God, we should never have... That is how you do horror. Again, you know, people criticize Doom 3 for trying to introduce horror elements, but then you have things like that, pure audio alone, making for far greater scares than any blood jump scare could ever do. Again, like I mean, I've already mentioned beforehand how this game inspired me in terms of, you know, horror and everything, and that's pretty noticeable in a lot of the reviews that I've done as far as the little storyline that I've cooked up, but... Again, it's little things like this that inspire me, because, again, seeing somebody so afraid, it just 
resonates, you know? Plus, not to mention, there's something innately terrifying about the fear of the unknown. And again, a lot of games use this to their advantage, but I think in Doom 3 especially, what makes it stand- what makes Doom 3 stand out from, you know, any other, uh, you know, horror first-person shooter is that a lot of the times, you don't really know what exactly is tormenting you. I mean, yes, you can generally assume that it is a demon, but at the same time, there is a lot of evidence to suggest that there is something a little bit more devious at play. Because, like, I mean, we've heard the womanly voice from before. You know, we've heard her from the... Like, again, it's just brief clips, but again, you hear things like Deliver Us From Evil, and again, even the... Uh, even the, um, clip that I you know, pointed out back in... I think it was, like, part five... I think it was part six, actually. My favorite moment in the game. Again, all of these things... You don't know what they are, but you're frightened regardless, because... Again, you are terrified about what this is, what its origin is... And there's just so much behind it, which... Uh, again, I mentioned last part that I was really sad that Doom 3 never got a sequel in terms of being a little bit more horror, or at the very least it didn't have a sequel in the sense of, you know, continuity or, you know, thematics and aesthetics, so... Uh, id Software, sub-series, please, focusing on the horror. Resident Evil 7 is a pretty big game, and that took a more horror aesthetic. I mean, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be too big of a stretch of the imagination to see if, you know, the Doom series could try that again. Ah, choice cuts meet. And yes, we do still have the zombie enemies in this place. Although this time they come off as clammy, naked people. They're without genitalia, of course, because we don't want to be too vile. Oh, that's a little bit frightening. I did comment on this earlier, but I really do like the design of hell in this game. I don't really have much more to add to that. But of course, that is why I always keep my juicy Doom tangents on hand. Yes, indeedy. And there is actually not a lot of stuff I can talk about. Again, a lot of the stuff that I did have planned for this part is more so to do with uh, spoilery things that are, well, a little bit more revealed later on. And again, it mostly involves the Soul Cube, a certain character that we haven't heard from in a while. Sergeant Kelly, we don't know what happened to him. Actually, plot-wise, there's a little bit more that isn't really, uh, that consistent. But then again, I guess it's by nature of, you know, Doom attempting to have a little bit more of a grandiose story this time, but... Uh, now that I think about it, there's... a little bit more that probably could have been a little bit better paced. Because, like, I mean, not only do we have Sergeant Kelly apparently still being alive, but we also have Campbell and Council Swan attempting to stop, you know, Earth's fl fleet from reaching Mars. And then, of course, we have Doomguy running around attempting to stop Petruga, so... Yeah, there's a lot going on, but it isn't really given a lot of focus. I mean, it's... Oh dear. Whoopsie daisies. That was a bit of a mistake on my end. Yeah, there's your loading screen. But, um... Yeah. Again, to make an apt comparison to Doom's story focus, I kind of liken it's Devil May Cry in some respects, and... Like, I mean, yes, there's a lot of stuff happening, but it isn't really given as much focus or uh, really that much attention by the protagonist, which, again, in Doomguy's case, I can understand a little bit better than Dante, since uh, Doomguy is mostly an avatar for the player, but still... Uh, I don't know. Again, I still like Doom 3's story, but I do wish that it did have a lot more expansion to it. And going back to the death that you saw just a little bit before, I guess that was pretty much just there to showcase the power that a Hell Knight has, because, man, they can kick your ass six ways from Sunday. But of course, by this point, you already have most of your weapons back, so this shouldn't really be of any big issue. Ooh, Jesus. I suppose if I could talk about anything else, and again, I did mention this with the PDA, but again, I think as a horror concept, I think uh, the way in which the demons were tormenting him was a rather intuitive method of torture, because I think paranoia does play a big effect into how you fear something, which I suppose gives credence to the mantra, there's nothing to fear except fear itself. But at the same time, though, playing with its victims is rather devious. 
And I think that's something that probably that probably scares me more than anything else, just to know that, yes, we could do something, but we'll wait. We'll leave you guessing. And I suppose that's a part of fear of the unknown that people are afraid of most. Just not knowing, because again, if you have knowledge, then you know what to do and you know how to take a proper course of action, or if not that, then at the very least you know what you're in for. If it's unavoidable, then at least you can prepare for your circumstances as best you can. I don't know, there's just something so intriguing about that concept, and it's the kind of thing that I think a lot of stories could really benefit from. Because, I mean, people uh, criticize like a lot of horror movies and a lot of sequels for over-explaining things, but I think the son of a good writer is, you know, somebody who knows what to leave in, but at the same time leaves stuff vague enough so that you never truly know what's going on. And some might call it lazy screenwriting, but... I don't know, there's just something about... There's just a balance that I think you can hit, and it can make for some very fantastic horror concepts. But in any case, I'm just trying to pad out for commentary here. I do realise that in the absence of a lot of story elements, that Doom 3 does leave me... a little bit jabbering at times, so... And again, that's not exactly any fault of the game itself, it just makes for a poor commentary. Which is why, in retrospect, I think it was mostly why I uh, touched upon a lot of the beta elements of the games, as well as the enemies, and... Holy crap, that was frightening. But again, Hell is actually a pretty expansive area for those who say that, you know, uh, the UAC base takes up a large chunk of the game, because you do get a decent amount of exploration into Hell. Although, then again, I suppose that was more so done in comparison to the classic series of Doom, rather than, you know... Uh, Doom 3 in and of itself. I seem to be handling the imps a little bit better in this run through. Now, for those of you who are worried that this will be the only time we see Hell, we do visit it, albeit briefly, towards the very end of the game for the final boss. But, um, I think I can see where people are coming from in that they probably would have wanted a little bit more environment variety. Uh, but at the same time, though, I mean, if you were going to go for, you know, something abstract, vibrant, and colourful, I don't think this area would really do you any favours, because, again, it is still very grungy, fire and brimstone, with, you know, a very beautiful view of the universe to it, so... I guess there is some merit to that. Although, you do get these fantastically glowing green portals, which... They give a screaming effect that I think is incredibly cool. But anyway, we're going to reach another cutscene in a, in a few moments, and as such, I will take a drink of the Pepsi, and I will leave you to watch. But first, we must prepare for our boss fight. Save us! That was a pretty cool entrance by Doom Guy right there. But yes, this current enemy, I believe... Again, again, I probably should have researched this before I started, but I'm kind of lazy. But I believe this creature is called the Guardian. What it does is that it guards the Soul Cube. And the Soul Cube apparently needs our help. Now, the way in which this boss works is that it sends out little drones to find you, since I believe the creature is blind. But by destroying all the drones, I believe that leaves the uh, blue light on the top of the creature's back exposed. Uh, yeah, what the Soul Cube said. Anyway, that kind of eliminated my entire point for speaking. Although I suppose, in the brief moments that I have here, I suppose I could also mention it since it was one of my tangents, but, um... It appears that the Soul Cube is guiding Doom Guy for reasons that, again, I would like to get into now. But again, it kind of touches upon something that, you know, we'll see a bit later, and it is a tad spoilerific. Yes, we got a Soul Cube. Overall, though, unless of course, uh, overall though, I don't think this Guardian boss is really too bad, unless of course, unless of course you're directly going at it like Leroy Jenkins. So again, keep your distance, shoot out the searchlights, and then aim for the top core on the on the top of his back. <coughs> Excuse me, you should be fine. 
With that being said though, I do kind of like the boss arena. In fact, um, I've never tested out the multiplayer for this game, and I don't think I will since the PS3 servers are probably down as of 2017, but again, I wonder if this was some kind of multiplayer map. Soul Cube. Um, not really gonna have the chance to do a lot of talking here since, you know, some more cutscenes are up, but I'll give the little ending speech a little bit later. So, who is Hell's Mightiest Warrior? Will we ever get back to Mars? Is anything gonna be normal? Find out next time in the Doom 3 commentary. I'm Scully, keep it new metal. Peace out, guys.